do you like video games? I mean, I'm thinking like, you know, anything where you could have objects in the video game and you could just knock them around. So, you know, this and, and they crash into something else and it bounces around. Uh, and, and you got to think, how, how does that work? How do these objects, how do you model interacting objects? And the answer is springs. And we're going to use the same idea to model an, a collision and show that momentum is conserved. So when if I have a ball A uh, interacting with ball B, it's moving over there and it hits it. There, there's a force pushing those apart. Uh, and, and since they have the same magnitude force but equal but opposite directions, then the change in momentum of these two are the same or opposite. They're opposite of each other. The total momentum change will be zero. And that's the idea behind a collision. But we want to model this and see that it's actually true. We could, we could do it in paper, but I want to make a model. So the idea is to take what happens if this ball interacts with that one and it gets to the point like this. So here's ball A and, and it overlaps with ball B. Well, that would be a collision. And I can make a force, I'll call this FB on A and F. A on B proportional to the amount that they are uh, compressed. We'll call that S, the amount of overlap, right? So the more they are overlapped, the more they push each other apart. And in fact, that's exactly what a spring does. So let's just say, um, and actually I won't even do the overlap. I'm just going to do the distance between them. Okay, so I'm going to say if they overlap, then the force pushing them apart, F B A, the magnitude is going to be equal to some spring constant times S, where S is uh, equal to R B minus, this is magnitude, minus R A. It's the difference between them. So here's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to model the motion of a single ball by itself. And in that case, I can do a numerical calculation. So a numerical calculation says, let's start with the momentum principle. F net is the change in momentum over the change in time. And these are vectors. So if I break this into a small time step delta t, I can write this as P2 minus P1 over delta t. So P2 is the momentum at the end of the time interval, and P1 is momentum at the beginning, where P in general is mass times velocity as a vector. I can solve this for P2 and I get P2 equals P1 plus F net delta T. So if I know the net force on an object over some time interval, I can find the new momentum. Now let's look at the definition of average velocity. Delta R over delta T r2 minus r1 over delta t. So r is the position vector of the object, and so the same idea, r2 is the position at the end of the time interval, and r1 is the position at the beginning of the time interval. Uh, this is the average velocity. So I could solve this for r2, and I get r2, same just by multiplying both sides by delta t and adding r1, r2 equals r1 plus v average delta t. Now let's do a trick. So I just calculated the final momentum. So instead of the average velocity, I'm going to use the final momentum divided by the mass because that would be the final velocity. So I can say r2 equals r1 plus p2, which is wrong, over m delta t. But we have something really powerful here. I can now calculate the position, the momentum at the end of the time interval and then do it for another time interval. This is important because I, if these two things are colliding, during the time they're colliding, there will be a force, and that force will change. And so I can use that to model the collision uh, without actually having to do momentum, conservation momentum, and see that it actually is an elastic collision too. So I'm going to build this with one, one model, one ball. Let's build one ball, and then I'll come back and I'll add my second ball for the collision. So let's switch over here to Python. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is a GlowScript vPython, and I got some numbers over there because I was calculating something else, and I just decided to change it. 
So I'm going to first make ball A. So let's say ball A equals sphere. Uh, and I'm just going to run it. So you see in, in Glow Script v Python, we get this three dimensional sphere, and that's what makes it so awesome. Uh, but now I can give it some parameters. I'm thinking it's like a like a car, right? So it's like a five centimeter ball, and let's say it's half a meter away from the origin. So I'm going to say the position is equal to uh, equals vector. I'm putting it in the negative x direction, uh, negative 0 0.500, 0, and the radius equals r. I'm going to give say r equals. 0 0.05, so 5 centimeters. It's maybe too big and small, but I can change those. And let's make it yellow. So now if we run this. So there's my ball. It moved over the side and moved it smaller because that's not at the origin. Uh, so that's good. Now I need to give it a mass and a velocity and a momentum. So I'm going to say ball a.m is a 100 gram mass, so 0 0.1. Now I need the momentum. Ball a.p equals ball a dot m times the vector, how fast is it going? Let's say it's going um, 0.65 meters per second. So it's 0 0.6500. 0, 0. See, I just made that up. I didn't, I just, on the top of my head, I came up with a number. It's actually not easy to do. It gets stuck. You're like, I can't think of a number. Okay, so that's the momentum, the mass, um, and I need a time interval, t equals zero, dt equals 0 0.01. Okay, now I, I just want to move the ball across the screen. So I can say while t is less than 2, rate 100. So rate tells Python to not do more than 100 calculations per second. That will make this kind of run in real time, um, but it, it didn't have to do that. You could do something else. Now the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to, this is ball A, so I'm going to say fa equals vector 0, 0, 0. Right, because there's no force on the ball. It's not interacting. It's just moving across the track. There's, there's no forces on it. Now I'm going to update the momentum, which it shouldn't have to do anything because it's moving at a constant speed. But I'm going to do it anyway. Ball A dot P equals ball A dot P plus F A times T T. So it's not going to update because F A is the zero vector. But I can add that in later and change it. Now, oh, and this is important. In Python, this is a make equal to sign. So it takes that value and it makes it equal to the new value. So it is P1 and P2 and P3. It's all those P's. Now I need to update the position. Ball A dot POS. Ball, oops. Ball A dot POS. Plus ball A dot P times DT divided by ball A dot M. So that's that P divided by M times DT. Now I'm going to update time and I'm going to save it. Colliding balls example. I don't know. I'm going to run it. Moving ball. Okay, we're happy. I'm happy. Uh, now I'm going to put the other ball in there. So let's make the, another ball. Actually, I just copy all this stuff. Uh, and now, so ball B is going to be at the origin, and it's going to be stationary. And it's going to be, it's not going to be yellow because I want to be able to see them apart. It's going to be uh, cyan. I, I find that yellow and cyan show up really well at the black background. Uh, it's going to have a different mass. Let's say it's uh, 0.15, uh, and it's not moving. So it has a, a vector 0, 0, 0, and this is ball. Let's see, I got to change that to B. Change that to B. Change that to B. Oops. Okay. Let's see if that runs. Okay. That's good. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and find, calculate my, model my whole thing. I'm not even going to do it on paper. So the first thing I can do is, is my spring constant K, my effective spring constant. I'm picking 100. I don't know if that's too much, too, too large, too small, whatever. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to calculate the distance between those two masses. So this is going to be S equals, I'm going to go from A to B. So it's going to be ball B dot POS minus ball A dot POS. 
That doesn't do me anything. So what I'm going to do now is to see if the that distance is less than the distance between the two spheres. So I'm going to say if mag s is less than 2 times r. So 2 times r is the center to center distance if they're right next to each other, not touching. So if it's less than that, they'll be overlapping. And if it's overlapping, then I want a force pushing them apart. So now I need to calculate that force. So I'm going to say if that's true, then Fa, which is the force on A, is going to be equal to negative k times s. Now wait. So s is a vector going that way. And I want the force. I think that's right. So I'm, this is the force on A. I think that's right. I might, I might, I might get that minus. I get that minus sign wrong a lot. Um, so I, I calculated the force on A, right? Notice up here, F A is equal to zero. So each time it goes through the loop, it's going to set F A equal to zero. And if they're overlapping, then it calculates the force. And in the next step, if they're not overlapping, it sets it back equal to zero. So you have to re. So it'll be fine. I don't want to have the, always have a force on the balls. Uh, so this is ball A, that looks right, but now I need to update ball B too. So ball B dot P equals ball B dot P minus F A times DT. So F A is the force on A. The force on B is the opposite of that because forces come in pairs. For every force there's an equal and opposite force. Now I need to update the position of ball B. Ball B dot POS equals ball b dot pos plus ball b dot p times dt divided by ball b dot m and that should work unless i got my minus sign wrong and then things are going to be bad so let's just save that and run it it worked i'm kind of happy but did it really work uh, let's see if momentum is conserved. So let's make a graph. Let's, let's plot the momentum as a function of time for the two balls. So down here I'm going to say uh, g1 equals graph, uh, x title equals time. You don't have to really put time, but I'm plotting t in seconds. Uh, y title is going to be uh, p and the momentum in kilogram meters per second. Uh, I, I need to get a bit of width to width width equals 500 height equals 350 so just just because I, I made my screen smaller that would make the graph show up now that just makes the encapsulation of the graph in order to plot two things I'm actually going to have two plots so let's say uh, F B A equals G curve, and I should do yellow and cyan, but now they won't show up on, on a white background. Uh, so let's do label equals ball A, and color equals color dot blue. I guess A is yellow. Let's do red. Okay, now let's do F B B equals G curve. Label equals ball B color equals color dot blue right because that one's cyan and blue is close to that so now down here in the loop I need to plot the momentum of A and the momentum of B and I can't plot the momentum because momentum is a vector so I'm going to plot the X component of the momentum so F B B stands for ball A dot plot T ball a dot p dot x is the x momentum of the ball i should plot the total nah don't worry about it f b b dot plot t ball b dot p dot x let's run this thing okay i mean it works i don't know if you notice it works but it does work because right here i have uh, the momentum of ball A and the momentum of that one zero and then A bounces backwards so it has a negative momentum but if I add these two lines together I'm gonna get right here in the middle just like I did before which is constant the whole time yes I should plot the total momentum let's do that 
FT equals G curve uh, label, you gotta spell it right, equals total, and let's make it green. And let's do this. Um, I guess, let's do this. P total equals ball A dot P plus ball B dot P. And then I can just plot the X component of that, which may or may not be the best way to do it, but FT dot plot T P total dot X. Total, right there, constant. Just like I said. Actually, yeah, it's not the, I said it was in the middle. It's not in the middle. Yeah, it should be the same. That's right. Because that's zero. So we're averaging those two. Good. I'm glad I plotted it. Okay, so that works. Momentum is conserved. What if, what if I, I don't know, change something? What if I change the mass of this to, to make it more massive too? Let's see what happens there. It looks different, and so but momentum is still conserved, okay? And notice that this is, I'm plotting momentum, not the velocity. The velocity is not conserved. And, and is kinetic energy conserved? Yes, but I'm gonna leave that up to you as an exercise because I wanna show you something even cooler. Okay, now I can do something like this. What if, what if they're moving towards each other? Could they move towards each other? Yeah, they can. So if I go up here to ball B, let's give it a negative velocity, negative 0.2, velocity. Okay, I'm gonna really show you something cool. Okay, so now they're both moving and they're both moving in the x direction and, and everything works. So everything works. Okay, now watch this. This is gonna blow your mind. It's gonna, it's crazy. I tell you it's crazy. So first I'm gonna do is make trail, I'm gonna turn on trails. So make trail equals true. And then down here, make trail equals true. Okay, now this one starts off on the uh, X axis, but I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Let's say it's, it's shifted up uh, R over I just picked a value. So now it's not on the y-axis. So now when they collide, they're going to be off-center. What's going to happen in that case? Let's just run it and find out, right? That's how we do things. What do you think about that? Okay, let's see our, uh, let's say our, let's say point, point seven r times r. Because they'll still be, they'll still collide, yeah. So, I mean, why is this working? Well, remember I calculate that vector between those centers of the balls. It, it's a vector. It doesn't matter that they're shifted. And then since the force is in the same direction as that, uh, that vector, it pushes them apart in whatever direction they overlap. And so this still works. Now, is momentum conserved? Looking down here, yeah, it's still conserved. The momentum is, there's a collision right there. The momentum's constant. Okay, what about, what about the momentum in the y direction? Let's look at that. So I'm gonna go down here and just change all these to y. So that's why I did the total y, y. Now let's plot the y momentum. It's the same collision. And here you'll notice that before the collision, the y momentum was zero because neither of the balls are moving in the y direction. But then after the collision, one moves in the positive direction and one moves in the negative direction and they have the same momentums. So there you go. And kinetic energy is still conserved, but I, like I said, I'm going to leave that up to you. So there you go. I'm going to give you the code to this. Um, and this is how a lot of games model collisions by looking at whether things are overlapping or not, and they push them apart. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to model the things so it looks cool. There you go. Okay. Hope you like that. I had fun. It worked. I'm kind of always excited when things work. So there you go. Code down below. I promise.